Hey everyone, I hope you're having a fabulous Tuesday. I'm getting really excited to um, jump on an airplane tomorrow and travel to Cairo Sushi if you're going to be there. I'll see you soon. So I'm really excited to have a special time with all of the amazing um, chiropractors in the boot camp. So we have lots of cool things planned for while we're there. Um, if you're missing, if you're not in the boot camp, I'm just going to let you know, you're definitely missing, missing out. Hey, Lizzie and Melissa and Elizabeth. Nice to see you. All right. So here's the deal. I want to give some special training today to, Hey, Sarah, can't wait to see you tomorrow. And Richard, great to see you. Um, I want to give some special training today to something that I see happening regularly. And those of you who know, know that my mission is to empower um, female chiropractors to just be incredible rock stars, personally and professionally. And um, I, I'm going to draw from my experience as an Alaskan in that I love to hunt and I love to fish. And hey, and there's my niece. Hey, Trisha. It's good to see you. Um, and so we're going to blend fishing and hunting into this Facebook Live today. And, and they really do come from coaching calls. So the first part is you're getting exactly what you're fishing for. What do I mean by that? Well, I was recently on a call with one of my clients, and um, her volume keeps going up, but her money is kind of staying the same. And because we can't pay for our lifestyle with volume, we got to focus on the money, right? And money is what happens when a commitment is made. And a commitment in your office really it doesn't happen until money is exchanged, I'm just going to say. Um, all right, so then, so I'm listening and I'm listening and I'm listening. And she has done a great job attracting a lot of Medicaid practice members. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But her particular state is getting ready to change to go from $28 of reimbursement to 12 for a chiropractic adjustment. <laughs> That's not good at all, especially if you crunch your numbers. And if it's costing you $25 to deliver an adjustment or even $15 to deliver an adjustment and you're collecting 12, it's really no different than taking $3 out of your pocket laying it on the counter every time they come in. So we really have to look at business in terms of our dollars and our cents. And we really have to get clear on our numbers. Hey, Amy and Carl and Sean and Jordan. So good to see you all. Amy, I just messaged you. Um, all right. So, so I said, well, you're getting exactly what you're fishing for. Like you keep going to the pond where those who don't have much money are swimming around and you're putting in the perfect hook because man, you're catching them left and right. Bam, 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 bam. But the problem is, is all of that volume still has a cost in order to deliver that service to that volume. So what we have to do is we have to change ponds that we're fishing in. And let me give you an example from actually fishing that I think is so appropriate. And I hope this gives some clarity to all of you who feel like, oh my gosh, I don't want to pick a niche because I don't want to exclude people. Hey, Mark, great to see you. So let me just teach you something really important about being niched and how important having a niche market is. All right, so um, we like to ocean fish and we do a lot of halibut fishing. So halibut are typically between 150 and 180 feet of water. Um, they're very specific jigs and bait that they like. You better have pretty heavy, um, you know, like a, a pretty heavy uh, fishing pole. And like ours are kind of shorter. I don't really like fishing halibut with a long rod. It's just, you know, like when you pull up a big barn door, you don't want a bunch of weight way out there, right? So they also, they like a sandy bottom near pinnacles. So when we're fishing there, and there's a specific way, like you jig for halibut. So you make it that your, your bait is going like this and stirring up sand, which gets the halibut's attention. And then they come and they decide if you have the right bait, if they're going to grab your bait. And then hopefully you hook them and bring them up and get them into your boat. Now, if I instead was, was um, let's say, using 
a, a, a little jig that looks about like this that we use for sa silver salmon. And I'm down there trying to get a halibut with that tiny little, that tiny little jig that has no bait on it. I'm not going to be bouncing it off the bottom because it's not going to work. I'm not going to catch a halibut. Why? I got the wrong stuff. That's not what a halibut chooses. That's not what a halibut eats. As well, that's not the action. No, as I'm fishing for halibut sometimes with the right rod, the right reel, the right bait, the right line, the right everything, sometimes I'll catch a lean cod or sometimes I'll catch a king salmon or sometimes I'll catch something else. Now, it doesn't mean like, okay, I don't, I'm going to throw that fish back. Well, it depends on if we're at our limit. I'm going to throw that fish back. It just means that wasn't what I was set up to get right? So it's really important when you're structuring your business that you know exactly what are you fishing for and are you in the right fishing pond to get that. So let's go back. So if you go to, let's say out here, Big Lake, and you expect to catch a halibut, it's not going to happen. Halibut don't live in fresh water. They live in salt water. So you also, you also have to make sure where you're putting your time, your energy, and your money that that pond has the niche that you want. So for instance, if, you're, if your niche is pregnancy and kids, like no offense, but you probably don't want to say yes to an event at your local senior citizen home. Why? Well, that's not your niche. Now, does it mean that if, a, if, a, if an older person comes into your office that you're going to turn them away? No, that's not what I said. Remember the bycatch? Like, I'm fishing halibut. I'm fishing halibut. But, man, I got a, a big old king. Awesome. What a great surprise. But I'm not fishing for that. I'm fishing for something different. Megan, welcome. Laura, welcome. Selfish. Hey, and Dan, and Jennifer, and Sarah, and Michelle. And Robin, so good to see you guys. I'm so happy that you've joined me. If you do have questions or comments, if you pop them in the comment section, I can answer them or bring you in, involved in this conversation. So that's niche marking. So the next thing I want to talk about is in the crosshairs, right? So when we're hunting, you want to find, you know, find your target and put it in the crosshairs, right? And then you're going to squeeze off around. Dan would know that. Dan's a competitive shooter. Um, so here's the deal. You have to be really clear on your numbers. What's in your crosshairs? And let me tell you why this came up today. So I was talking with um, a, a new client today, and we were, I asked her, what is your ideal weekly volume? So if you're taking notes today, you're going to write, write this down. So you take your ideal weekly volume. Her ideal weekly volume, 92. That's how many she wants to serve in a week. So this is going to be a math problem, right? So 92 is in the... Um, in the top part of this fraction. What is it? Numerator and denominator. So in the numerator. Hmm. I don't know how I remember that one. But And then I ask, all right, so let's calculate what is your year-to-date PVA, and it's six. So we're going to take 92 and divide it by six. That's her PVA. And that's going to tell you, when in that mathematical equation, that's 15. So that means in order to hit 92 practice members a week, at a PVA of six, you're going to have to serve 15 new practice members. Now, you know, if we started out and put that in our crosshairs, let me tell you how off that's going to be. This is why it's going to be off. Because as you look at new practice members, and, and right now she's a one-woman a, a one show, <clears throat> by the time you answer a phone call for that new practice member to schedule their first visit, you get them their new practice member paperwork. They come in for their first visit. They do their new practice member tour. You do a consultation. You do your exam. You do x-rays. You schedule their second visit. You do all your follow-up stuff. You get ready for the report of findings. You do the report of findings. You do your financial consultation. And then you do your first adjustment. That's about three hours. So if we just do 15 new practice members, right, because we took 92 was our was the desired weekly volume divided it by six, which was the PVA that gave us 15 new practice members, right? So is everyone with me? Give me a thumbs up if you're with me on this. So then if we take 15 new practice members and multiply it by three hours, that's 45 hours. And all we've done is served 15 new practice members. Now, I'm not saying working 45 hours a week is bad. For those of you who know me, I, I think that's totally fine. We just 
have to make sure that your numbers are like something that's even possible in terms of your ideal practice. Now, if you want to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week, by all means, if, if, if that's how you want to roll, that's fine. But let's make sure our numbers add up. So now we've got 45 hours a week just to serve those 15 new practice members. Well, we still have adjustments we want to serve, right? So then we take 92 adjustments and let's say you're you're about 15 you're about five minutes per adjustment so that ends up being I think we determined five hours and someone can check my math no I'm sorry eight hours so now I've got 45 hours for new practice members eight hours for the adjustments I'm at 53 hours and I haven't worked on my business yet so do you see that the numbers were in my crosshairs I thought but that's not really what I'm going for. I'm not really going for 92 adjustments at six PVA and 15 new practice members. Now let's change that equation and look at improving instead our PVA, which is your patient visit average. The easiest, quickest way, I know there are lots of formulas you can use, but the easiest way to just bam hit that is adjustments divided by number of new in the same time period. So if you want your daily PVA, it's number of adjustments divided by number of new, that's going to give your PVA. If you want monthly, number of monthly adjustments divided by number of new is going to give you your P, uh, month, monthly new in that same time frame a month. If you want your year-to-date PVA, then you're going to do your year-to-date adjustments divided by your year-to-date new practice members, and that's going to basically give you your year-to-date PVA. So Freddie, that's how I'm, I'm calculating it for um, just like on the fly real quickly. So if you have questions, you got to post them in here because um, it's like going, it's kind of trickling fast. Okay. So then, so then if we, we have to make sure that that is actually in our crosshairs and that is actually something that we want to do. So we always have to start with the end in mind, right? And the end in mind is what income do you want to generate this year? So you need to take your business overhead plus your personal overhead plus your big rocks, like the things that you really want in your life, right? And that's from Jeff, Jeff Smith and 2X plus 1 Mastermind Coaching from years ago. And that gives you, I have to earn this much money, right? Now, I encourage all of you to follow Mike McCallowitz from Profit First, who I did a Facebook Live with in April. I'm doing another Facebook Live with him in July, I think July the 13th on his new book, Clockwork. But in, in Mike Michalowicz's book, Profit First, he is gonna walk you through and make sense of it, right? Not just the what and not the how, but the rationale behind it. So we all know what to do to grow our business. Like I have no doubt everyone who's on, who's watching me right now, if I said, give me 10 ways to grow your business, you could go bam, 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 and give me 10 ways. But the, the 10 ways and then how are you going to do them? Like, What's the step-by-step? -step? What's the sequence? What's the strategy? Because to grow your business, it can't be ideas that are just like random. Like, oh, I'll, you know, I have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and I'll do a little bit of this. It's got to be a cohesive strategy, which, mean, which means there's got to be promotion, there's got to be the thing, and there's got to be follow-up right? Even if it's a, something in your office, there's got to be promotion, there's got to be a, the, the thing, and there's got to be follow-up. And I promise you, if you do not have a solid strategy for your follow-up, you are missing out on so many opportunities, like so many opportunities. Because remember, it takes like 12 touches in order for somebody to say yes. So if you do an event and you had 12 touches and they got there, now the relationship is really starting to go and they may say yes down here but if your contact with them stopped at the event that didn't work out very good so you got to have a whole strategy whether it's the stick for those of you in the boot camp or private coaching the sticky note system your daily success sheet um your systematizing your success your no white spaces your gap strategy all of those are strategies designed to grow your business from the inside out, right? Like, so we have to grow our business. We have to feed and nurture those who've already been attracted to us, those that we're serving on a regular basis. Then we have those over here who are reactivations, which we have to feed 
we have to nurture and we have to fish, right? Because right now they're not in our practice number, in our office. And so we have to fish them too. We have to nurture them and we have to fish them. Then we have this group over here who are new practice members who we have to feed and we have to fish. So inside your practice, you're feeding and nurturing. Reactivations, you're fishing and you're feeding. And new practice members, I, I'm sorry, you're, you're fishing and you're nurturing. And over here, you're fishing and you're feeding. So you have to make sure that you have strategies, not just ideas, for each one of those threes. And then all three of those, all of those come together to be your business growth strategy. All right, so going back to profit first. So you have to make sure then, so on, on average, let's say your practice generates somewhere between zero and $250,000 a year. So of that $250,000, and you can break this down into weekly or monthly, the very top 5%, like as soon as you make, as soon as you make money 5%, it goes to your profit. Bam, just your profit account, 5%. Then you're going to have owner's pay, which is 50%. 50% of that 250000 goes into owner's pay. Barb, do you mean after I paid my bills? No, that's not what I mean. I mean, of your gross, 55% is going either to owner's pay. I mean, owner's pay is 50%. 5% is to profit. Then we have 15% to taxes and 30% to up X. So when you get those percentages, now we can start calculating, all right, so where do I have to be? So this is starting with the end in mind. So if you want to generate $250,000 a year, then we go back and we break that down into what do I have to do every month, every day, I mean every week and every day, right? And that's how we're going to get like accurate crosshairs. Otherwise, you could, have a, you could have it set up. Hey, Stace, good to see you. Hey, Elizabeth. And Tom and Stephanie, good to see you. So if, if I hadn't really crunched these numbers and I didn't know my metrics to determine if 92 for a target of practice members served every single week was a good idea with a PVA of six, I may be going for that. And yet, and Nate's going to stop me. And Nate's going to stop me. And Nate's going to stop me because 15 new practice members a week at three hours a piece is 45 hours. But I've only slated to be in my office three hours, 30 hours a week because I'm also raising my family. So what we do is we just like beat ourselves up and we beat ourselves up and we beat ourselves up because we're never hitting the mark. Well, you've got to make sure that that mark is actually in, is, is congruent with how you're practicing, with what your numbers are, with what your overhead is, with how much money you wanna make. It just can't be random. So that's why I'm saying you have to have a strategy. And if you don't really know, how do I calculate your numbers, my numbers, I can help you. Like We've got a whole week in the boot camp that walks you through that, knowing what are your numbers, what are the most important stats that you have to watch, how do I start with the end of mind? How do I set up my, my year? How do I set up my month? How do I set up my week? How do I set up my, my, my day so I'm, I really got it in my crosshairs and I know I can hit it? So I hope that was helpful today. So make sure that you're fishing in the right pond with the right bait, rod, reel, like all of your tackle. You're at the right depth and you're getting exactly what you're fishing for. So wh whoever is coming into your office right now, that is what you're fishing for. If you don't like the crowd that's coming in, you got to change up how you're approaching them. So that's number one. Number two, please make sure your crosshairs align with your numbers. How long does it take you to serve a, a new practice member? Like, And be honest, from the time that phone rings and they schedule that appointment or online, how long until they pay for their series of care and they schedule at the end of their port of findings. How much time does it take of you and how much time does it take of your team? Now, if you're less than three hours, congratulations. But I think you really have to add up that time. How much time does it take to enter them into the computer? How much time does it take you to do your notes for your first and second visit? How much time does it take to build that? And on and on and on. And then look at your target of how many new practice members you want to serve. If that is off, something has got to change 
or you won't hit your goals and you'll keep being frustrated and you'll keep being frustrated and you'll keep being frustrated. And the reason you're not hitting them isn't because you're not working hard enough. It's you're not working smart enough. You got the wrong GPS coordinates. You know, it's kind of like I, I keep, you know, have you ever like thought you were putting in the right password and you hit enter and you hit enter and you hit enter and it just keeps kicking back like, nope, wrong, nope, wrong. It seems like this happens a lot when it's a zero versus an O. And you're like, I know I'm putting in right. I know I'm putting in right. And then you look and you're like, oh, actually, I'm not. You know, it's, it's an I instead of an L or whatever it happens to be. So you've got to make sure that where you're headed is really in alignment with what your practice, how your practice is performing. And yes, I would love the opportunity to help you. Like struggle is your choice. If you're struggling, it's, that's a choice because you don't have to. You can be struggling right now in the mud, in the muck, having a really rough time. I'm throwing you right now, like zing. I'm throwing you a lifeline. I can help you, but we gotta get on the phone together. So go to 56daykairobootcamp.com backslash apply. Answer some questions. Let's jump on a call together. I can help you. And if I can't, I'll tell you and I'll give you suggestions of what to do. Not everyone that I talk to on the phone is invited to join the boot camp. I'm just saying, like, if I know we're not a fit, I'm going to let you know right off, the, right off the top because I got to tell you, this, this is my tribe. This is my people. And I want to make sure that those, I'm the gatekeeper of this tribe. Like I'm mama boot camp, And I want to make sure that those individuals that I invite into the boot camp, they have what it takes in order to do this. Double your business in 56 days. Can it be done? Absolutely. And I can give you tons of stories about individuals who are doing it. If you're struggling, it's your choice. I promise you it's your choice. And if you want to debate me on it, let me know. Let's go face to face on it. Like I'm, I'm in on that. I'm more than happy to, to talk through how that works because I'm confident in that conversation. It's going to help change, change somebody else's mindset. And instead of being stuck in the mud, they're going to be like, I'm reaching for that lifeline and I'm going to get help. I'm done with the struggle. I'm done with the frustration. Some of you who are watching right now, you got an email from me yesterday that said, are you sick and tired of frustrating Mondays? So I'm going to ask all of you, if you're sick and tired of frustrating Mondays and you're not doing anything to change that, and I don't mean, oh, I'm just going to try new ideas in my office. That's random. It's random. It's not a strategy. It is not a winning strategy. I've got winning strategies that we can customize to you because here's what happens when we just start doing ideas. We do a little bit of this and then we do a little bit of this and we're everywhere and nowhere at the same time and, and we don't even know how to really grow our business. But what you're gonna learn in the boot camp is how to create your winning recipe so that you rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and scale and grow and scale and grow. Way more fun. I'm talking F-U-N, fun, 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 fun. That's what it's about. And by so doing, you raise your vibrational frequency. All right, so can I give you one more tip? Give me a thumbs up if I can give you one more tip today. Like, this is really, really powerful. No thumbs up. I have to stop. Okay, I'm going to go. I got to get a thumbs up. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? A thumbs up. All right, I'm going to give it to you anyway because I'm, oh, there we go. Thank you. All right, so here it is. <clears throat> so I'd like you to put in the comment section, how often do you get checked? Like, do you get checked by your local chiropractor once a week? Do you get checked once a, every two weeks? Do you get checked once a month? Do you only get checked when you're in pain? So pop it in the comment section. Hopefully it'll populate fast enough. So the majority of chiropractors that I talk to, they get checked at least once a week. I've been checked once a week since I was a, a young girl. So that's what I do, right? And I'm healthier than probably the majority of people who come into your office. Just like, and Dr. Aaron says, once a week. Dr. Elizabeth said one to two times weekly. Hey, Dr. Cordero, welcome, welcome. 
Um, all right, so let me answer this, Freddie. 50% owners draw and 5% profit and 30% is salary hourly wage. Do we set up an S Corp? I get adjusted probably. Okay, so Freddie, here's what I want you to do. Um, go to 56daycarabootcamp.com backslash apply so that I, I can talk to you about this. Um, you can also go to profitfirst.com um, and Mike Michalowicz has all kinds of awesome free handouts right there that can help you specifically with that. Lizzie says two to three times a week. Freddie says one, once to three times a week. Um, okay, so here's the scoop. So we all get, we, we as chiropractors probably take better care of ourselves than the majority of people that we see. Would everyone agree with that? Just give me a thumbs up if you're like, yeah, for the most part, the majority of my practice members who come in, I take better care of myself and I have, right? So I have less years of accumulated physical, chemical, and emotional stress, subluxation than my practice members, okay? So, so then... In my mind, the thing that is best for my practice members, at the very least, when they're at a state where they've gone through acute care phase, when they've gone through active care, now their, their spine and nerve system is stabilized, we're working to maintain those changes that have been brought about, been brought about because of their regular chiropractic adjustments, and now they're on a consistent weekly adjustment schedule, which it may take a year for them to get there, depending on what we started with, what their commitment is to changing their health habits during care and now where they are, right? Does everyone agree with me that that could potentially take a year to get to once a week? And let's face it, once a week, that's what we're all doing. So I'm, you know, I'm adjusting in my office, I'm adjusting in my office, and I've heard people say things like, you know what, people don't want to come in on a regular basis, or people are going to say that you just want your money, or people are going to say, you know, I've, I've, I've heard people say that um, if you go to a chiropractor, you have to keep going, and I want to make sure people don't say those things about me. I heard about that guy down the road, and he sells those year, car, car, those year packages, and people come into my office, and they tell me they don't want that, and blah, 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 blah. Can, so can I just tell you something? All the stuff that people are telling you that they hear isn't about you. Unless it's about you, it's not about you. So don't make somebody else's story about you because it's not about you. Can we all agree on that? Like I heard blah, 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 or that guy down the street does that. Da, da, da. Okay. Is that guy you? Because if it's not, then don't allow that to stick to you. All right. So let's keep going. So then I start feeling as a chiropractor, I start adopting all of this nonsense that I'm hearing within and without of our profession that people don't want, they don't want to be on long-term care plans. People don't want to pay for care. All of this other nonsense that just isn't true. If people didn't want to be under regular chiropractic care, look in your practice. Why do they keep coming in? Okay, so we can chuck that one off. People don't want a, a, a schedule of care. They just want to come in as they want. Okay, people who are coming in consistently in your office then, are, are, are they the anomaly? No, they come into your office because they want you to lead them. All right, so let me just teach you something else about this. Um, this could be like a whole webinar. Oh, maybe I'll teach one. All right, so then I, I, I've adopted all of this like negative, this all of this negative stuff, all of these false belief that in my practice aren't true. How do I know? Because I'm looking at my practice members and they're coming in consistently and they're paying for care and, and they're referring. They tell me that they're doing well and on and on and on. I have all of this proof right in front of my eyes that it's different than what I'm hearing from individuals who have become victims of circumstances and now I've adopted that. <laughs> Don't adopt somebody else's nonsense. It's not yours. Don't let it stick. Get rid of it. It's not true, not true, not true, not true. Cancel, cancel, cancel. So now I've adopted all this and I'm sitting in a report of findings. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? Based on this person's history, based on the findings of their exams, based on what they told me they wanted, based on my experience, I know this person needs to start it three times a week for the next eight weeks. I know that's the best care plan for them. I know they need to be checked twice a week for 12 weeks after that. Now, am I maybe wrong and they're going to need more? Yeah, but I'm going to start there. Oh, this is exactly what I want to tell them. I know this is what they need. I know this is what my training and my experience has, has dictated, but 
I don't want them to think I'm a crook. I don't want them to think all of these things that no one has ever said about me before, but I've just adopted this negative belief system. So now I've acted as if it's reality. So now I'm sitting across from Mr. or Mrs. New and I say, so Katie, um, so um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start you at twice a week for a couple of weeks and um, we'll see how it goes. And Katie starts feeling weird. Like she doesn't know what it is, but there's this weird vibrational frequency because, you know, it's all about energy, right? So when we don't tell the truth, that's called an L-I-E, a lie. Right then, when I just gave Katie her care instructions of twice a week, I didn't believe it. That's not what my experience, my training, my wisdom, and that's not what this body has told me that I've, I just evaluated yesterday that they need. They need to be here three times a week at a minimum. But because of all of those negative beliefs, I lied to that practice member and said twice a week, my vibrational frequency is going to go down. Why? Because I'm lying. Now, that person senses a drop in negative in, in vibrational frequency. They sense a drop. Their subconscious mind says, alert, 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 alert. Something's not right. Something's not right. And guess what? Maybe they say, okay, to twice a week, but they don't stick around for very long. All because you chose not to tell the truth. I'm serious. All because you chose to believe negative beliefs that were not yours, that you have proof in your office that it is not true. You chose to adopt it. You chose to then lie to your new practice member, robbing them of their potential to be well, robbing you of your potential to be well, robbing your family of their potential to be well as a result of the service and income that you make. It's a big price. All because you're believing something that isn't true. So here's the deal. My experience has taught me that individuals who are underperforming in their practice, underperforming in their practice, commonly it's because they've attached all of these false beliefs that when I go through and I help dissect it with them, they're like, oh my gosh, I don't believe that's true. I get checked once a week and I'm healthier than my practice members. And you know what typically happened is they also, at one point in time, they gave care instructions. They're not recommendations. I'm not recommending a movie. I'm not recommending a, a restaurant. I'm giving you instructions. I'm giving you instructions because you came to me as a doctor and you asked me, Dr. Barb, how do I get better? This is it. I ask you, what are your expectations of me as your chiropractor? How long do you want to live like that? Do you want my care instructions to reflect that? And you said, yes, 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 and yes. Bam. There it is. So I do that one time and I get pushed back. Only because that person is believing somebody else's lie and I didn't see it in the sale. I didn't stand firm in my beliefs and in my commitment to help this person I backed away and now I said, uh-oh, people don't want what I have to offer. That is not true. And now every time you give care instructions for less than what you know is the right thing to do, it lowers your vibrational frequency, it lowers their vibrational frequency, there's this weird friction that happens, your PVA goes down and then you're going to be working way harder than you have to. Is this making sense to anybody? Just like pop in the section, Katie said, I just tuned in, but I feel like you're calling me out and I needed it. Awesome, Katie. Thanks for admitting that. If any of you, if this has resonated with you and in the same or similar way of, ooh, wow, I got to check myself, let me know. Pop it in there. If you're not in the boot camp and you want to have this kind of certainty and you want to be able to tell the truth because you're tired of lackluster results because maybe it's also not only that you're tired of lackluster results, 
maybe you just know in your heart, Dr. Barb, I'm capable of more. If you're capable of more right now, if you know you're capable of more, that there is no way you're living to your potential, whether in your office or outside, pop in the comment section, I know I'm capable of more. And go on record today for at least wise drawing the line in the sand, admitting to yourself, and now admitting publicly, I know I'm capable of more. I know I'm capable of more. I know I'm capable of more. And I'm committed to every single day doing what I have to do to advance to that next level. Why? Because my mission will not go unfulfilled. And my mission is to help female chiropractors from all over the world to transform the way they look at their practice in order to serve more people, in order to serve themselves, to be abundant, to be strong, to be confident, to raise extremely healthy families that the whole family unit is living to their optimum potential. Yes, Elizabeth just said, I know I'm capable of more. Great job, girl. I know that takes guts. All right, so I hope this has been helpful to you today. Again, reach out to me, 56daycairobootcamp.com backslash apply. We're gonna get on the phone together. We're gonna talk through your stuff. We're gonna get rid of like mm, these limiting belief systems that are holding you back so that you can rise above and live to your optimum potential. The 56 Day Chiropractic Bootcamp to double your business. I'm telling you, it's a mass movement and you're gonna wanna join us. See ya.